Welcome to Science Faction, where we put some serious science from your favourite blockbusters underneath the microscope. I'm Andy Gaffney, and joining me to talk about all things movie science is actress, writer and poet Siobhan Hickey, and the superhero scientist himself, Dr. Barry Fitzgerald. Say hello, people. How's it going? Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Yes, yeah, great to be here. Great to be here. Thanks for the introduction, Andy. Love being introduced. I think it makes you feel very special, you know, when people introduce you or important. Especially when Andy does. Yeah, Yeah. sometimes it could be a pity introduction as well, but you know, that's that's all right. Well, maybe for you. Well, (laughs) I've had my few pity introductions (laughs) in the past. Some of us thrive in pity. (laughs) So true. (laughs) <laughs> it is fantastic to be here with Midland Science for Science Week 2021. So oh, yeah, we're gonna, for sure. We're going to be talking about three blockbusters. We're going to be talking about three movies that I genuinely love. Now, you're going you're to hear me say I love a lot of films during this thing, but these three movies I genuinely love. Spoiler warning already. We're going to be talking about Tenant, The Glorious Geostorm, and <laughs> Jurassic Park. But first up, we're going to be going back to the dinos with a bit of cloning with Jurassic Park. We've made living biological attractions so astounding that they'll capture the imagination of the entire planet. It's, it's a dinosaur. There's no doubt our attractions will drive kids out of their lives. Grandpa! We're gonna make a fortune with this place. Jurassic Park, an example of a genuinely perfect film. There's Jurassic Park, Jaws, The Last Crusade, You've Got Mail. One of these very, very few pitch what? perfect <laughs> films. You see, you didn't expect I was going to throw that other one. Well, you, you, you've got mail. <laughs> Well, I, I would I put Sleepless in Seattle above You've Got Mail. I've never seen either, so I can't really say if either of them is any good. Because well, you like science loved. and not chemistry. Oh. Well, I, well, I mean, there's not much um, physics in love. <clears throat> oh, so. look at this. Look at this. Well, That's, there, there could be. That would mean there could be, yeah. But, I mean, as a physicist, I see the world in a very, very physicist type of way. Um, oh, you must be beaten off the ladies. Well, I gotta say, you know, you can't you can't be just rambling off a few physics definitions to get someone's attention or to drive them away, but you know. <laughs> Jurassic Park, surely a massive part of all our childhoods. Uh, oh hit yeah, me up, yeah. Hit me up with some memories there. I remember seeing it with my family. Uh, I was, was 13 years old. We all went to cinema together and and always remember it. Uh, you know, great experience seeing all these animatronic dinosaurs and thinking, wow, look at that. Wouldn't it be cool if they were real? But coming out and when you, I remember coming out of the cinema that day and coming out into the real world again and being disappointed not to see a raptor or a T-Rex. That's you know. when you decided, I'm going to be a scientist. That's when I decided I'm going to be a physicist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Siobhan? <clears throat> okay. I, Jurassic Park as a film is amazing. But as um, a child who was much younger than Barry when it came out, um, I had some serious nightmares afterwards. And it started off what I believe is a lifelong fear of dinosaurs. <laughs> um, so, yeah. If, if every time I watch that film, which I've tried to watch it a lot of times, I have serious nightmares afterwards. Can't get over it. Does a fear of dinosaurs fall under the irrational or irrational fear? Uh, 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 uh. Right. With cloning, it could be possible. Well, we see in the film that is 100% possible. To you clone see, you a see. Dinosaur. Well, <laughs> Look, I don't, mean, I don't well. want to put I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth here, but I mean, oh, who, but, Jurassic Park uh, where, is 100% possible, I would think. Who put who put said words in your mouth? Steven Spielberg. Michael Michael Creighton actually Crichton. Michael Creighton yeah Michael Creighton yeah yeah Steven Spielberg who is a renowned yeah as last time I checked a renowned molecular biologist as a part time as a long said he's he's directing career um, yeah, so then you know, so fair play to him. so then Doctor Barry put you know uh, this fear out of the way for Siobhan clone and dinosaurs yes no 
And when is it going to happen? Just saying, not we can bring, happen. we can bring. It's not. No, sorry. Okay. Big disappointment. And and you know we we've heard about cloning animals and cloning pets. You've heard in the news over the years about people cloning their cats, where they take a sample of the DNA of their, you know, still alive or just recently deceased cat, and then they try and clone the cat. And actually, that doesn't even work properly either. But what it comes down to is, if you want to clone something like it, you know, that died millions of years ago, you need to get viable DNA. And where can we get the DNA? Well, you might think the fossils that people are digging out of the ground. Problem is the DNA that we get from some of these fossils has just degraded over, over that time, over the millions of years that it's been stuck in the ground. And as a result, well, the DNA isn't usable or viable for you to go off and start cloning a dinosaur or even using the DNA and combine it with frog DNA or, or amphibian DNA like they did in the film to fix all the broken parts. So it's just not going to work, unfortunately. What? But what about if like, you know, like, didn't they find like frozen woolly mammoth, mammoth, mammoths, mammoths? Oh, I think plural because they plural? have found yeah. multiple well, woolly ma- mammoths. Mammoths is the plural, isn't it? Yes, I'm a writer. Plural, um, so like they, fa- they found frozen woolly mammoths. So what if the DNA was perfectly frozen? Would it be possible then? Still degrades okay. over time. You know, it's still, unfortunately, you know, freezing it and perfectly freezing it. And it's never going to be perfectly frozen out in the natural world. Those mammoths, some of them were found in permafrost, which is like frozen soil. And they were there for maybe thousands of years. And they've got quite good preserved carcasses. They could get, you know, some good samples of DNA, but they're not getting everything out because eventually over time, the DNA will start to get broken down. The moment you pass away or the moment anything dies, that DNA is starting to be broken down immediately. There are enzymes in your body which start to break things apart. And the same can be said for the dinosaurs when they died. The same can be said for the woolly mammoths. Even if they died and were frozen almost instantaneously, eventually those enzymes or something else from outside the environment will get in and take it out. So, so you're, what you're telling me is that those ads that tell me my frozen peas that are just as good as when they're picked are not just as good. Well, they're just, they're just, they're just good enough to eat. Let's put it that okay. way. You know, there's, there's a, there's a threshold on this. I see you're being careful what, here not to be yeah, sued. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. You know, I see, I don't work for the food company, so I don't know exactly what the threshold <laughs> of the bag of peas is. So may, <laughs> may I ask Andy a question? Does. May I ask <laughs> a question here? Okay. Right. So you're saying that because the fact that they died so long ago is the reason why we cannot clone dinosaurs so you said that we could clone things that just died like yesterday well i like, just mentioned there uh, as a few minutes ago about people trying to clone cats uh, you say try that but who like who's going around cloning the cats like has, has well, someone successfully cloned their cat oh well, somebody has tried has 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 had a class a cat a class a cat cloned um which is a cloned cat by the way class a class just made that up right now a class yeah you can see my new my new pet class uh, a cloned cat <laughs> and uh, they tried to do it and well the cat a cat was born but said cat did not look anything like the cat that died and so while the DNA might have been the same it expressed itself or it became it, it became viable or, or was was just it led to something else being produced that still had the same genetic makeup as the original cat it just just didn't look like the cat um, so there's no guarantee you'll get exactly the same cat appearance wise, but you might have the same DNA um, as what was there before. Why it wasn't the same, I don't know. I don't know what process exactly they used. I could be making stuff up here as well. But people have cloned sheep, and Dolly the sheep is probably the most famous one, which was cloned back in the 1990s. And cloning really is kind of a, an unusual term to use f- use for that process as well, because they didn't actually take one sheep and say we're going to exactly copy that it involved a very complex process of taking dna from one sheep putting it into the egg of another sheep and then putting that egg into a third sheep and then well dolly was born but dolly isn't necessarily didn't come out like a clone of any one of those particular sheep. and and it wasn't exactly exactly the same as one that started started out before the experiment and dolly didn't last very long Dolly lived, Dolly lived for a while. Did she? Not that, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dolly lived for a while. I mean, it, so, it so a, in, in terms of that, Dolly led 
well, okay, we won't talk about like how she was farmed or anything. I don't know. Oh, but she, she had a grand life. She had a grand, had a grand life. life. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Grand life on so a farm, if we yeah, were yeah. to clone a Tyrannosaurus Rex, they would have a grand old life. Well, well, <laughs> that's, you know, you're into dangerous territory there. <laughs> you know, I mean, hands up here, who's ever been to an old zoo and seen a couple of endangered species in there and thought, it's great that we have them still, but is that where we should have endangered species? I mean, what's the, I mean, have you ever, you've probably both seen a, you know, tortoises or turtles, the giant tortoises in zoos and you think wow it's great we still have them but should they be in zoos like that i mean we're trying to protect yeah. them but but in a way we're doing it to you know kind of the detriment of their life so if you brought dinosaurs back would it be a good idea to put them in a zoo well, well, no, i'm gonna be I, i'm gonna be pure devil's advocate here okay so <laughs> say right in jurassic park I they bring nothing less Andy. <laughs> they bring the dinosaurs back in jurassic park okay hammond brings it back so ethically, you're saying, look, it's a bit of a gray. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a gray area. But now uh, this is not me. This is not Andy Gaffney. This is just me asking the questions. Ticking me has like a Ryan Tupperdy esque figure here. Okay. I'm oh, just actually, asking. I mean, I mean, it's uncanny. Basically. I'm just asking. The, I'm just. Ryan. I'm just asking the questions here. <laughs> if if John Hammond. Go, go cloned, ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. Go ahead, Ryan. There. Go if John Hammond cloned the dinosaurs, are they yeah. not his property to do what he wants with them? Well, I mean, you know, did he, did, did, he pay, did he pay for all of it? I don't think so. I mean, well, it was in was Gen and was a company. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's not his company. I'd say he was getting a lot of external funding from, you know, angel investors and other people with other interests. So you could make the argument that the investors are the ones who could be making the decisions about where they would go. Right. So when you're cloned, I'm gonna sound like a like a Bond villain there. So if we clone the dinosaurs, sound like a Bond villain. You kind of look like one right now. <laughs> <laughs> like if if we're cloning dinosaurs, are they dinosaurs or are they products? <gasps> oh yeah! Wow, Ooh. so so bad, Andy. So bad with the ethical just, questions. Just That's shocking, like you know, it's like oh. saying that they're they're all coming out of a factory. I mean, well, but they are. And, and this is when Andy enrages the entire vegan population. <laughs> yeah, that's it, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just playing. Yeah. I'm just they're asking the questions. They're not animals. They're products. You're just playing. Yeah, playing devil's advocate by asking whether or not animals, when, when they're born on farms, are they products or are they animals? No, so I'm when, asking when when John Hammond clones them. Uh, yeah. Which, <laughs> So John ha- Hammond specifically, a farm specifically, of, yeah, only John Hammond. Nobody else, yeah. anybody else can do it. It's fine, but like it's John my, Hammond from Jurassic Park. Yeah. So my beloved dog, okay, if my dog who passed oh. away long ago, Egon was his name, named after a good scientist like yourself, Egon. I named after one, the best Ghostbuster. Yes, indeed. Well, yeah. I'm a Peter man. Oh, rest uh, in peace, Harold. Obviously, I'm yeah. a Peter man. You're a so, bit of a Peter, Peter man. Isn't <laughs> yeah. So if. If John Hammond cloned Egon the dog, yeah. <laughs> would I get to keep Egon or would John Hammond get to keep Egon? Ethically, I'd where are we going with that? I'd say you'd be out of the loop there, Andy. Mm. You know, I mean, you you're saying yeah. I'm not going to be part of this conversation. No, no, because because John Hammond did it and it'd be his. Because you just told me that John Hammond, if he was if he was cloning anything, well, it's his at the end of the day, right? But this sounds this sounds like it's going dangerously towards like the surrogacy laws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you see, I mean, the other things you'd be worrying about this though with the cloning is that it's one thing putting them in a zoo, but I, I've read scientific papers where people have talked about cloning animals that are almost extinct or have become extinct and then putting them on safari so you can hunt them. Oh, no. Well, that, that's great. Yeah. No. And I've, see, I've seen papers about this where people have done that. They've said, yeah, that's what we want to do. We're going to clone these and then we're going to hunt them afterwards. Yeah, and see, and that it's stuff like that that makes me think. Do you know what the film The Purge? Maybe it had the right idea. Oh yeah, mm. yeah it's maybe maybe true, but mm. it's it, it's 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 kind of grim to think that that that's that's what you do. And then the other thing is that uh, this is a huge problem with bringing animals back like this. Is you're bringing them back to a, a habitat and a world that's completely different from the one that they left. And you know, think about the dodo. If we were somehow able to bring back the dodo or bring it back to Mauritius. Mauritius is a completely different place to the one which it eventually became extinct on. And you wanted to introduce the dodo there again. You, you couldn't. It wouldn't never survive. And the same can be said then with the dinosaurs. You bring the dinosaurs back to the world that we live in and trying to integrate them then with the world that we live in, it'd never work. 
in it. There'd be so well, many issues. That would, we, would we ever get to a point where there would be a service down the line where you could clone a just dead pet? <laughs> Say you really loved your pet. Would there ever be a service down the line where called, I don't know, like, like Deliveroo, but for clones, where Fido's just dropped. Let's get him in. Let's get, let's get him cloned quick. Are we talking ever... Fido from the Seven Up ads? Or are we talking We're about dying. a dog? <laughs> what a what a what a what a what an old reference there! You're knocking out there. <laughs> the uh, see there you go. Yeah. The so yeah. Would we ever get to a point where like designer cloning and just like cloning is a service offered every day? Is that somewhere down the line? Well. I mean, think, think about it this way, right? We have people who want thoroughbred dogs. And to get a thoroughbred dog, you need to have that lineage in place that's been built up over generations and generations where you try to ensure that you have the best attributes for your dog, like German Shepherds or, or something like that. And many could ar- you could argue that, that trying to have these thoroughbreds and to breed in this controlled way is kind of like a very... Um, very kind of invasive way of ensuring that your gene pool is narrowed towards a certain certain type of pet that you want this type of pet to, to be in your life. And when you start talking then about cloning, and then you say, well, you know, I want to clone my pet, but, you know, the last one, you know, had, it was black, I'd rather the coat was red, and I, I wish it was a bit taller. I think you're getting then into that territory of trying to to clone and fix the attributes of the dog by genetic manipulation. But we're already doing that when we're doing thoroughbred breeding with animals. We're, we're fixing the attributes. We want the best to rise to the top. And when you have, you know, two attributes from a dog, one with a great coat, great tail, great legs, okay, we want them to breed together because we're hoping then that those attributes will come out as a combination in the offspring. Is that not the same? Which we saw happen in the sequels of Jurassic Park, that people stopped going to see the dinosaurs that they'd seen. So they said, well, look, let's make up some dinosaurs. Let's make them scary. Let's put, you know, the raptor onto a thing with wings. They started making yeah. dinosaurs yeah. for the people. Yeah. Which uh, is there. That's, that's where, like, because I'm not okay with, like, purebred and all of that kind of thing so like the whole idea of then of messing with genes and stuff like that to splice and just make something new just for our entertainment that's that 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 that's where i get really uncomfortable just and then even oh. even you're saying andy by cloning your pet so like the idea w- would be like if you were to clone your pet and let's just say science could make it an exact look-alike replica but what's to say there's nothing that would make that dog the same dog because it would look like your dog. This is it. But it's it like, it's have like, your dog. It's like person. triggers. It's yeah. like triggers broom in, in only those horses. <laughs> <laughs> With the like, multiple handles. And yeah. The brush yeah it's, 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 the same. it's the same broom. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what we're essentially asking is, yeah. you know, <laughs> is that the ethical question is triggers broom. Um, so I guess before we move away from the world of cloning and Jurassic park, um, I'm going to hasn't going to do with all this stuff. I'm going to get Barry yes or no conclusively as our scientist. Uh, Barry yes or no cloning on that kind of a scale for entertainment. What's the chances out of if you can rank the chances from one to ten? Give me it seven. <laughs> I mean, Andy, to be honest, I mean it's an absolute one. If I could go with Lord and one, I'd go Lord and one. Cloning for entertainment purposes. <laughs> One, it's an absolute one. We're in ethical minefield land here. Like, and Andy's like, ah, just a, it's, I'd say it's a grand old seven. You know, there's a couple of ethical hurdles we have to jump, but other than that, it's a seven. No, it's a one, Andy. Come on, it's a one. It's well, a one. Sh- yeah. Shall we see if we'll beat one with our next two films? Shall we? Let's see. Let's see if we shall. Yes. Yeah. So we're entering with one so far. Um, as we move on to our next film which was the movie that was meant to save cinema i don't think it did but it tried to was chris nolan's time-bending epic that was tenant one of these bullets is like us traveling forwards through time the other one's going backwards can you tell which is which how about now some people loved it some people hated it as i said I genuinely, I absolutely love this film. Some people said it was far too confusing. 
Shiv, as a resident writer, what did you make of the whole thing where Chris Nolan was like, yeah, you go see this film, but you might have to go see it twice there, lads, to make sense. Is that a fault of the writing or was it a fault of of us idiots watching it at home? I think it was Christopher Nolan's ego, really. <laughs> We don't say anything against. We do not we do say not, anything no, no, against no, our I, savior. I say that. Our I, savior of cinema, Chris Nolan. <laughs> I shouldn't say it, but I, the film was just trying to be so so clever. I think what I found, I watched it um, on my phone, which is how I assume Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I you just, watched it on your phone. Yeah, <laughs> that actually, I actually that passed me by because I just didn't want to hear it. I think I didn't. You watched that fo- film on your phone. It's like saying that you 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 watched Independence Day. Through three or okay, yeah. glass you know, windows, like yeah, one of those, like you know, those things you had as a child that you yeah. kind of like had the different <laughs> images, yeah, like Thomas yeah. the Tank Engine and stuff like that. Yeah, I watched it on one of them. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I watched it on my phone. Anyway, and I was kind of like, okay, I found that I could follow it once I didn't think about it too much, but then they kept trying to explain it, and then I started having to think about it, and then I started overthinking it, whereas. I think with films like that, I kind of just want to be there and go with the film and not have to like think too hard, you know, especially a film that was coming out after everybody had been locked up for how many months. The last thing you want is to be sitting in a cinema going, huh? Um, (laughs) You know, I assume that's the exact face people would make. (laughs) (laughs) You couldn't see with the masks. But it was, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. But from a writing standpoint, I mean, it just was like too clever. He no. does like time, though. He does yeah. like time. He does love. Yeah, He's he got loves time in a lot of his films. You know, yeah, yeah. He, he he hates a linear narrative. Yeah, Chris no. Nolan. I mean, the only you know? linear narrative he had was um, about the di- the Dark Knight trilogy, right? Yeah, and he kind of started. He kind of started playing around there as well. Did he with time? Well, just kind of like at the start of Batman Beans. Oh, I yeah, he's kind of, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, he did a bit of that. But I mean, the, the stories, it's not like you could, it's not like he released the, the middle one first and then said, I will do the, that, we'll do the origin story now just to confuse everybody. And then we'll jump into the Bane, Bane-led uh, Dark Knight Rises after that. You know, I get, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But he loves the old time. Mm. He loves playing with time in his films. Well, Chris, no- Chris Nolan seems to, now I'm a massive, massive Nolan fan, but Chris Nolan loves playing with time and he loves James Bond so it was only a matter of excuse the pun a matter of time before he created a James Bond time travel yeah. movie and that is exactly what for better or for worse that is exactly what this film is it's a James no. Bond film involving time travel is it time here comes travel Barry- so here he is now yeah is it time it's, travel though this is, it's really confusing <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, I don't think it really is time travel, though, in the sense of what we would expect, like, you know, Doc Brown, Marty McFly, jump in the DeLorean, hit 88 miles per hour, and bang, they're in 80, 80, 1885 in the Wild Wild West um, with Will Smith. Um, so it's... <laughs> Wiki Wild <wah-wah. it's, laughs> Wiki Wild wah, wah West, yeah. And Kenneth Branagh. And um, no, it, they, it don't, it's not time travel in that classical sense. Yes, they do have the ability to move backwards in time. But what they're doing is they're doing a thing, I think it's best to call time reversing or entropy reversing is what they call it in the film. And and the best way to think about it is this. You take a cup, you put it on a table and in our world, we have a world with forward entropy. What forward entropy basically means is that the universe as a whole wants to be and will become more chaotic in general. There are exceptions The die hard. Um, theoretical physicists out there will come at me and say, well, what about this situation, this situation? But in general, at home, if you put a cup on a table and it knocks off the table, hits the ground, smashes into a million pieces, entropy has increased, chaos has increased, you've more disorder. And that's the world that we live in. We see that world play out every single day. We don't necessarily see cups on the floor in pieces, then suddenly reassembling in midair or on the ground and jumping back onto the table. That's not what we see. And that would be a situation where the entropy is going back the other way. And in the film, it's all based around the idea that objects can actually do that, that they, the objects that are coming from the future, from these people who have this interest in preventing a, a world apocalypse or maybe wanting to cause it in the first place, they have given the present where the characters are all based in the film, the ability to create objects that can move backwards 
through time, but in terms of not necessarily through time, but their entropy moves backwards so that the frames that you would see with something moving are played in the opposite way. So if a cup had been in pieces, had been exposed to this ability to reverse its entropy, then eventually if someone wanted to pick up the cup off the ground, as they talk about being free will, because there's still free will here, because you have to decide when you're going to pick it up. Uh, once they put their hand out, then the cup starts reassembling jumps on the table. Yeah, they have to so feel like, it. They have to feel it. It's kind yeah. of like it's kind of like Star Wars and the Force. Yeah, they have to feel it. I mean, but you have to feel things too when you're picking up objects in the forward entropy universe that we live in. That you know you have to if you want to pick something up, you have to actually proceed and put, and put an action in place where you move your, move your hand forward to pick up the object. And it's the same even with the reverse entropy object. If you want to pick it up, you have to put your hand forward to move it. So this it's the same process. It's just that that object uh, kind of does something a bit weird that we don't normally see every day. And uh, you know, a big part of time, I know we said this isn't a time travel film, but a big part of time travel films is trying to change something in the future. And they do hint that something in this, this is what they're trying to do, is trying to change something. But is sending one object back through one timeline ever going to change everybody's timeline well i mean it could it depends what the object is if you decide to send let's say an empty milk carton i don't imagine that that's going to change people's lives however if you decide to send a highly advanced quantum computer back in time to somebody who you know will find it and will have the ability to decipher it and use that technology then for the betterment of or not necessarily the betterment of society, depending on what kind of person gets their hands on it, then that type of technology could have a huge impact. So or, it depends on what or it is. Andy, if what? we sent Bruce Willis from Armageddon back in time Boom. with his technology to stop the meteor hitting the Earth, therefore the dinosaurs back in wouldn't time. be killed... That T-Rex is going to be looking up and going like, that is the size of Texas. Like, we need someone who can take out an asteroid the size of yeah. Texas. And yeah. look, yeah. this man doesn't want to miss a thing. And the world... He's coming. Yeah. Possible. Could, could happen. Could work, yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to see that film, though. <laughs> what, Bruce Willis in time? Hey, you hey, tell hey, me hey, who does not hey. want to see Bruce Willis in time. Ha- You're asking... Harry, Stam- Harry yeah. Stamper. Harry Stamper. Yeah, Harry Stamper in time. Time traveling back in time. Yeah. With they, don't know ja- they don't know Jack about time traveling. <laughs> Uh, is that the tagline is it oh my <laughs> god that's amazing we need to write this <laughs> yeah this is going to get, Netflix well, no 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 let's not write it let's get the master of time to write it and direct it Chris Nolan yeah Chris Nolan, Nolan. No, no, no. yeah he's a big fan so, of but... Andy <laughs> It's a big yeah. fan of Andy and Bruce Willis and time yeah. traveling dinosaurs. Yeah. It's about it's about time we all got together. Oh, the, oh. Hey, 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 hey. I was waiting for that. The yeah. Yeah. um, <laughs> but right. So in the world of tenants, if I did send if I did send something back to a lad back in the past to say right, use this to either mess up the future or fix the future, would that affect me in the future? How would that, I, I just, this is the thing, like, I get it in, like, Avengers, stuff like that. The Tenant thing is, like, how, is it possible to, I, I don't know, is it possible to, if, well, I was asking, like, about affecting the entire world. Would that not, I know they talk about it in Tenant, they mention, um, what's it, the grandfather paradox and yeah, this kind of yeah. jazz, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, how does, stuff, yeah. you know, are, you're essentially giving up your own timeline, I think I think you're actually delving into a word that I like a lot. Oh no! <laughs> do you have a do you have a do you have a siren for what you're about to say? Like an elder? I don't I don't have a siren for it. No, but I think you are visiting we, the multiverse. Up on, uh, here we go. It's here the multiverse. Go. What's happening here is that when, for example, if something comes back from the future, uh, like you just said, or Marty, like Marty McFly, <laughs> like Marty McFly, or this technology that came back from the future in the Tenet universe. When once that arrived back, the universe split, and the, everyone in that universe well started to follow that trajectory. But there would have been an alternative where the technology never arrived back, and the Earth was left well, unbeknownst to it that there was people with these abilities in the future, or maybe those people in the future didn't develop those abilities or technologies to be able to do that in the first place. I really do believe in this multi not believe but i mean believe is the wrong word because then it means like it sounds like i'm starting a cult for the multiverse no what, what i what i mean is that there's 
a lot of good scientific evidence out there suggests that according to the laws of physics, according to what we see in quantum mechanics, what we know about the universe, that this idea that when decisions are made or big moments take place, that there is uh, not just a moment or a decision made, but all decisions are followed or all options take place. It's just that you are only conscious of one of them and the rest all take place in, in parallel so what you're, universes. So what you're saying is in potentially at least one little universe, I am a success. Yeah. And we are in that universe. Oh, oh. We, we are. Yeah, we are yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, but there's, there's probably also another universe where Andy Gaffney is president of Ireland. Yeah. And, that, and look, that is, not a, that is not a nice world. <laughs> Pres, it's, I said president, not t shirt. <laughs> President, president, yeah, yeah. The president has no power. That's a confused world where everyone's like, "Look, lads, can we not you do this instead?" And they're like, "No, no you know, I am, I am, you have no power. Yeah, I am minister for science. I am not. I am not putting up with this." The so are we talking about? So in the world of like your time travels and all this kind of stuff, be a tenant or otherwise, is there any way of doing time travel that isn't? I don't like time, like time travel happens every day, but we think. I say we, as our scientist, Barry, is that is there a way of doing time travel that isn't multiverse? It's not like doing something to change tomorrow. It's just going to change a one reality somewhere, maybe. Well, you could, ta- you could time travel right now if you want to. So what you do is you get up and you go for a 10K run. Oh, why, why 10? Why 10? K? Why 10? Well, yeah, like, I mean, pick a yeah. distance, Andy. Any distance at all. I just pick 10K. <laughs> 88. I want 88, 88K. 88 kilometers. Andy, Mm. get up there and go for an 88 kilometer run. And the second you start moving, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, that any object that moves, they will experience something called time dilation. In other words, what that means is that from the person's perspective that's moving, your clock, if you had a clock with you, it'll be start to run slower than the clock of everyone else around you who they were all stationary and not moving. And this would give you the opportunity to time travel. Now, how far, how, how much of a time travel would you do? Eh, we're talking like min, minuscule fractions of a second. You wouldn't even notice it. But according to the laws of relativity and Einstein, it is possible and it is it can be done. You just have to start moving fast enough and you need to start getting up towards the, the speed limit of the universe, which is the speed of light, roughly around uh, 300,000 kilometers per second. Once you get up there, you are in a territory where you can start to really experience time travel, so, but one direction time travel to the future. So if now, obviously, I know this is not possible. So let's just say <laughs> <laughs> I was able to run at the speed of light. Does that mean I'm go like I'm actually time traveling? If you're able to run the speed of light, yeah. you have an access to an infinite energy source somehow. And if you have that, then you would be like, you know, ruler of the universe. Um, but let's say you, you may call me, be- you may call me Zeus. Yes, there we go. Um, so if you're running below, you have to be running below the speed of light. Let's say that. Okay. Right? Because if you get to the speed of light, you know, you just, uh, you don't, yeah, half, don't, yeah, don't, yeah. Halfway I mean, to yeah, the speed yeah. of light. Halfway. I mean, uh, halfway to speed of light. Yeah. Yeah. At speed of light, you've got all these singularities and infinities and stuff like that. We don't want to be playing with the, those things, ones over zeros and things Ooh. like that. But if you're at, yeah, exactly. You're such a mess. <laughs> um, but, but if you're at half the speed of light, yeah, if you're doing that, you'll start to experience time dilation effects. If you run for, I don't know all the numbers off the top of my head, but if you run for any extended period of time at half the speed of light, you will experience time travel to the future. Thank you. Because your clock will run slower than everyone else's outside who isn't traveling at half the speed of light. And when you stop running, you'll end up finding that, oh, wow, so according to my watch, uh, let's say an hour should have passed, but actually for everyone else, two hours passed. So I've actually skipped an hour and gone to the future. That's how mm. it would work. Well, thank you, Barry. You and- have given me a goal. <laughs> it's a good goal. It's a solid goal. How would we reverse entropy of an object? Um, with Christopher Nolan's fictional help. <laughs> if I feel, I feel like, I feel like the rating, the the the, the one out of ten rating system is is about to be implemented here. Okay, so yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it up into two though, right? For time yeah. travel, we're getting a good nine because of the whole running thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> speed of light, speed of light stuff. Yeah, yeah. To yeah. the future. So no problem. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
which I like to call also, which is like Coldplay lyric. It's a bit like living. That's what time travel is. <laughs> Don't know that song at all. Oh. No, no. <laughs> the, right, so time travel, we're giving it, yeah. a, like, give me a give me a one to ten there, Barry. Um, no, well, look at him, look at him playing with five. You, look you, at him <laughs> playing with five. You can experience it every day by running, um, only to a very small amount, so I'm going to say a good solid can, ten. Can, time travel. Can we just point what? out that it looks like Barry is um, like being sponsored to talk about running in his ASIC top? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh, go for a run. There are other brands of running top just, available. Just, just get out there, and ASIC has got your back. Oh, yeah. Sorry, right? yeah, if you want to, if you want to time travel. Yeah, do it with As- Asics. As- Asics will get you there. Um, but- yeah, I'm gonna say a solid ten because it's it's in the laws of physics. It's perfectly the, perfectly plausible. So yeah, sure. Time travel to the past is a bit messy. You're looking on like um, um, you're looking at like time loops, infinite time loops, and weird solutions to the general relativity equations, and you're hoping then for <coughs> the multiverse. Um, but um, yeah, so that one to the past, mm, but to the future, yeah. And playing with like physics of objects where to make them go backwards and stuff like this. Like, you know, if I wanted my, if I wanted to knock me Toyota down the M50 backwards. <laughs> yeah. How do I do it? Be, yeah. How you just do refer it? Yeah. Um, for those who are watching this, I'm just going to recommend that you don't do that because if Andy, if you do it like Andy, you're going to be arrested. Or and dead. On the news. <laughs> or you dead. Know, on the news. Yeah. Yeah. Local man arrested for driving Toyota backwards down the M50 <laughs> trying to be like a tenant. <laughs> so give me a t- give me one to ten on that. One. Oh, but it's right. one. Well, look, it's, we one. A, it's one. It's one. So we're level pegging. Yeah, but it's between one and ten. If he said zero, I would have said zero. If he said minus <laughs> a million, I would have said minus a million. So yeah. it's like... Right. <laughs> I mean, that means we've only got we've only got one film left yes, that might so. score uh, higher than a one. Oh yeah, and is that it? is that is our first documentary of the <laughs> evening. <laughs> Geostorm. The Senate Committee will now hear from Jacob Lawson, Climate ISS Chief Coordinator. May the record reflect that he was nearly one hour late. Yeah, sorry about that. I literally had to fly in from outer space. <laughs> Thanks to a system of satellites, natural disasters have become a thing of the past. A clip there from Geostorm, a movie that is going to 100% get 10 on our, on our <laughs> rating scale. So let's go around the table here. What, what was... You want, us, you want us to rate it already, is it? Well, no, what us, was... No you, want rate, you want us to rate the film or rate the science in it before we even talk about the science? It's it's a it's a classic. It's not a classic. There's no need to look at his no nervous smile. He's just yep. he's just like um, he's just going to keep talking. Shiv, Shiv, let's let's just let's just go to you first. Do you agree with Andy's statement that Geostorm is an all-time classic? I mean, I mean, over to you, Shiv, Barry. Remember? Over to you. Well, Shiv, remember okay. me and you used to go fishing. What? Oh, don't. That whole thing was just... Oh, Andy. <laughs> that film was so painful. But I did give myself a really nice manicure while I was watching it because... <laughs> you didn't really... Because what, cool. what else are you going to do when you're watching Geostorm? Geostorm, is it a good film? No. no. Is there some interest in science in it? Yes. Should they have made the film? No. No. That's my summary of Geostorm. Well, right, because I was coming in, I was getting ready for this, right? And I was thinking to myself, you know. Well, you're getting ready for the negativity? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was getting ready for this. Okay, right. So, right, premise of Geostorm is that there's a satellite called Dutch Boy that yeah. can, was set up to stop climate change. In what year, Andy? In what and year like that. was this put in up in the sky? Andy, yeah. What year? Oh, actually, I don't know. I can't remember. 2018 when this was... happened. 2018, And then the majority it? of the film is set this year look I'm sorry I can't remember everything I literally came from space <laughs> there's a line from the film and I love that line of the film where he sits down in the senate and he's like I'm sorry I'm late I, can- I literally had to come from space <laughs> well, that was my Jared that was my Jared that was my Jared can you do it one more time yeah, I literally came from space well, go. That's the- go go on one go, more go. time Andy okay, one more yeah. time I'm sorry I'm late I literally came from space <laughs> No. But you see, okay. that's a, no. 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 
that's but it's okay. No, 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 it's okay because Jared Butler's no. character, he does say in the film that while he's meant to be American, he in fact is from the UK. That was mentioned. Mm. And uh, because they shout cast, out to Robert they Sheehan cast Jim Sturgis. with the worst, yeah. like near Cockney accent. I, I just, uh, Robert Sheehan. I don't know where he got that accent. Did he? I mean, these guys, they're professional actors. Yeah. He obviously picked it up off someone on set and said, all right, I'll go with that. You know, what, Australian, that? I, was it? <laughs> yeah, g'day, g'day. <laughs> Welcome to space. <laughs> oh. We've got the real burgers on the way. Do I think everyone is clearly having a great time in the film? Surely. Oh, they clearly are because they know they're in the, one of the worst premise films ever made. Yeah. And they're thinking, this is a garbage plot, but we're getting paid bags yeah. of money. Let's just have fun. You've got them. Ed Harris, right. who went from Apollo 13, which is a phenomenal yeah. film. Brilliant film, yeah. To Geostorm. To equally realistic <laughs> space film. To Geostorm, yeah. Andy Garcia. Another great actor. Oceans films and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he's in Geostorm. Uh, Jared Butler, who is in PS I Love You. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I've got to tell you, here's a secret though. PS, I wish that was ever made. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, um, <laughs> no, I haven't seen any good Jared Butler films. Except maybe Law Abiding Citizen. That's maybe it. Uh, Greenland wasn't too uh, bad. He's good. Greenland. Which great. Greenland? Oh, gr- oh, Greenland. Greenland actually is yeah. good. Yeah. Despite good, yeah. him. Yeah. Despite him, <laughs> just in spite of him or despite despite him, despite him. <laughs> a bit of both actually. Yeah. yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah, right. So let's let's break down. Let's break down the kind of the sciency premise then of Geostorm. Where okay, there was first it was a satellite that was set up to control the weather, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Right. Sure. Now yeah. I I know for a fact that that is that that is possible because. Yeah. Go. They happened in the Wii Olympics that time, didn't the they? The Wii Olympics. Did. The Wii Olympics. Yeah. Which ones? The Wii Olympics. The 1896 Olympics in Athens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, they did. No, yeah. They, um, so back they, in they, Greece, they, first Olympics, yeah. they came up with a way of controlling the weather. Do you weather. think the first Olympics was in 1896? <laughs> uh, the, mod- the first modern Olympics. Okay. He is uh, he's a scientist. He's not a historian. What did he say? You know... Um, no, so 2008 Olympics are taught with Andy Beijing. They wanted to get the rain out of the way before the other events started. So what they did was a bit of cloud seeding to try and get the clouds to start to form early in the day so that they could then, well, basically rain early in the day. And to do that, they'd have planes flying over Beijing, uh, spraying the sky with silver iodide and hoping then that that will help to coalesce the water crystals into the clouds and then eventually then then it would promote rainfall. So they actually really were able to do so that. that. Now, was it 100% su- successful every time? Not necessarily, but it does work. It, it's a proven and, tr- and, and, and tried method. So why don't they do that in the countries where they have no rain? Like in Africa, um, just so we can like bless the rains down there. Well, uh, it's not necessarily, yeah. <laughs> I was going to go for uh, that song, uh, Who Will Wonder, Who Will Stop the Rain. So we were all like working away on, on Wii Music <laughs> references there. Except, except uh, Barry, who's trying to explain things to yeah. us. I, who's trying to figure out what the lyrics of the Creedence Clearwater Travis song, song is. song is. <laughs> that, yeah, Who Will Stop the Rain. Yeah. <laughs> who Will Stop the Rain, there we go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, used, I used to sing that in the band. Um, I thought you were going to say in the bath, the bath and I was like, bath. okay. Uh, Not in yeah. the bath, no, I never sing in the bath. because Yo, you'd sing I'd... that song in the shower, you would. I would sing in the bath because I'm afraid I might drown. <laughs> so, um, no, I would I would sing it in, in a band. Band. <laughs> um, there's Barry going, yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. Well, Spotify I'm link is available. Yeah. It is, yeah. If you can find yeah. the musical Weatherman on Spotify, good luck. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. Uh, that was what I used, when I used to play solo. That was my name, the musical Weatherman. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, that was Is it. Is that yeah. true? Yes, that's 100% true. Yeah. I you generally, I, I don't know what to compare this. I, I don't really like So, and we're, I'm, I, and we're talking so did about you, the weather here. Did so you stop when Bewitched get... blamed you? Uh, yeah, I, said, oh, I said, uh oh. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't talk about Bewitched. No. You were no, just no. like Sailor V, didn't you, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And this is where yeah, and this yeah. is where Barry's like they've lost the run of themselves now. <laughs> oh, but they actually the, the songs went the other way around. I mean, that's the thing, right? You know, they were they did say the beat and then they blamed the weatherman. Mm. Um, 
because they didn't blame the musical weatherman, so I got off the hook on that one. You, so got, I, you didn't have to sue anyone. Yeah, but in, yeah, but in some anyone. multiverse, the musical weather <laughs> is still going. He actually, the musical weatherman is actually on tour with me. Um, so. Right, so, like, so Barry, knock us out, knock us out a bit of weather science there. Okay, right? And what could, what so, right? They stop rain by putting what like iodine <laughs> silver, <laughs> silver silver iodine into the sky yeah. so they put silver iodine into the sky which again sounds like a Coldplay <laughs> lyric they put silver iodine into the sky to stop the rain okay yeah. to start the rain to stop it later to start Basically, the just rain to, get, to stop it later to get rid of yeah. the rain to get it out yeah. of the way to get yeah. it out of the way yeah. okay yeah yeah right. exactly yeah. yeah yeah okay so so and, and the whole thing with this dutch boy satellite is that they want to very quickly control the conditions necessary for certain weather to take place in certain environments almost instantaneously and i mean the things you want to control there moisture heat um you know con- control pressure if you can control uh, currents etc uh, all the key components that I mean, we're talking here about wind currents can also affect of course uh, the weather as well all these key aspects that will control weather and they think that this device can do all of that now we've been we've been doing a savage job over the last few few years and in the last 400 years of basically controlling the weather in an uncontrollable manner without realizing we're doing it and that's of course through the emission of all the old good old greenhouse gases oh, i was about to give us a pat on the back there i was gonna be like oh no, I'm, not go us, on. I'm not giving us him <laughs> i am not patting ourselves on the back for this one uh, well uh, done us and well done yeah, jerry butler which is why exactly which is with jerry butler right when i'm watching that film geostorm i'm thinking what a, so this is a film right think about it right they have built a satellite system around the world to control the weather that we have messed up because of our industrial activities. So here we are. Sounds like a good premise, okay, right? Sounds responsible. However, they have a whole huge launch area set up in Cape Canaveral, and Butler, at one point in the film, he decides to go to space. Because he's got a next Dutch boy. He's a problem with Dutch boy. He gets on said shuttle by himself <laughs> and launches into space by himself. Yes. And very saying, talented, he's a very a talented whole scientist. bunch of gases and everything else, and they're doing that all of the time. Yeah, sure, it'll come back they're down send, with three they're people. They're sending rockets up like buses. <laughs> like, oh, like, that's it, yeah. Now, but, but a lot of these buses, what the, a lot of these buses, not these rockets <laughs> use, not buses, so please don't be worried when I say this. A lot of these, a lot of these rockets... They are based on liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. They have other different additives. So it's not necessarily fossil fuels, but nonetheless, they are igniting things. They are burning oxygen. Now, when they burn oxygen with the hydrogen, because you need the oxidizers, the oxygen, and they have the fuel, the hydrogen. I mean, a lot of it's water that's produced, but there are other things produced that have to be because there are additives in there. And they're just launching, you know, let's just keep launching away here, lads. We need to get the, the rockets up there and they're just launching uh, to their heart's content. And I just thought that was ridiculous. Here he is trying to fix the planet and trying to save the planet, and there he is launching the space by himself in his own shuttle. Yeah. Well, Which... one one aspect of the story was that they were kind of secretly planning to use it as a weapon. So to go back to the old ethics thing of yeah. our first film, yeah. you know, the old controlling the weather thing, you know, might lead to might lead to a bit of dodgy behavior. Well, in this case, I think it did. Yeah, and we we see it in the film. It plays out like that because a couple of people think, you know, geez, we've got this great thing up in space. Imagine what we could do. We get all the world to ransom. Actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's wipe out all our enemies, and then we'll take over what's left. That's what they're trying to do. So, apart from rain, is there any is there any weather thing that we can we can control here and today in twenty twenty one? Is there any weather thingy that we can yeah, control? We can. I don't say flip a fan for wind. <laughs> that's what you're gonna do. No, no, we can't. We actually can't. So what we need to do is we need to fo- follow the Paris Climate Accords from 2015. And what we need to do is to start emi- stop our emissions, decrease fossil fuel usage, become more sustainable thinking. And yeah, we can control the weather then because we can start affecting the global temperature and reflecting global temperature. This can have an effect then on everything from ice glacier melting to uh, the currents in the seas towards uh, plant and diversity and uh, flora and fauna. So over time, yeah, we can control the weather. That's, that's actually really, it's just really interesting about like even saying that when you think about the first lockdown we were in last year, after just a couple of weeks, the weather was like, the air was clearer. We didn't really have rain. I had the best tan of my life. You know what I mean? But it was, the yeah. weather was so, Andy, stop smiling at that. The tan was amazing. But 
it's just best tan ever and best, best tan, tan ever. ever but it just it's better it. even better than this tan. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just your foundation honey um it is yeah 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 lots of foundation yeah <laughs> but it's but it's just interesting that you say that that like even in that short amount of time that you could notice like i mean i live beside the botanic gardens in in dublin and when you're walking by you can actually smell the flowers from outside which is something that i've never experienced and I've been living here for like 15 years. It's a massive difference. People were able to see the fish in Venice in the canals because the boats weren't going up and down anymore. There's no tourists. Yeah. Suddenly the water started to clear. You could see the fish. So, you know, we just got to do these things. Putting spaces, pay stations in place to control the weather. That's very much science fiction. D- doing controlled and localized rain, stuff like that. Yeah, that can definitely work and help. Um, it's not a wholesale uh, 100% going to work like this uh, Dutch boy does in the film, which is clearly able to really control and affect weather in, in drastic ways all, all over the planet. But to do it on a longer term, we just gotta, we just gotta follow, undo what we did before. And, and it's gonna take time to do that. And, and we, we took the time to affect the weather that we have now, the way we've done. So I think we have made a bit of a mess of that. So it's time now to kind of go, right, we need to go back. I o- and hopefully we, hopefully we still can. I always remember um, CFCs from from school, yeah. from the junior cert. CFCs, bad. Bad CFCs. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. The old fridges yeah, as well. Yeah. And aerosols, aerosols and deodorants, things like yeah. that. All that, yeah. The old CFCs, yeah. But would a yeah. satellite controlled by Jared Butler not, not help us on our way? <laughs> yes. Well, you see... The thing is now... Sorry, uh, I, I drowned out for the last 20 minutes or so. So, anyway, so yeah. Andy, Andy, just spoiler Jared alert Butler. here. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and a massive spoiler for you. Sorry. But Jared Butler and Geostorm. Not real. Okay. No, it is it. It is it. I watch on the history channel. <laughs> <laughs> Andy watches An Inconvenient Truth followed by Geostorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, kind of fe- I, fell, I fell asleep while I rolled onto the other one on Netflix. I'm like, oh my God, this documentary is wicked. Sa- savage, savage viewing together. Do you, want me now to, do you want me now to rate the science in this film? Because I think... It's uh, yeah, you can rate between nine and ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care what you say. He's made up his I'm mind. I'm going to say controlling the weather and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to give it two <gasps> or three. Could you control? Two could you control? Three. Yeah, control rain yeah. with silver in clouds yeah. and wind by putting up a fan. Oh, you can do. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah you can control <laughs> yeah. control the sun by <laughs> going and getting to a sunbed. Uh, so I sunbeds. Yeah, yeah. Andy yeah. Just sitting in his gaff now with a little fan going. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jared Butler. That's my Halloween costume. I gotta be Jared Butler. What? What an awesome Halloween costume! I gotta be Jared yeah. Butler in Geostorm, you're running a around with a fan. Got a lot of people looking at you and thinking, "Why is he dressed like someone is coming to fix my seat?" <laughs> You know? <laughs> I did like though the fact that when they were saved or whatever, it was there was a real kind of uh, go on Mexico. The guy who was Mexican was like. Thank Mexico. I was like, I thought I really liked <laughs> yeah. that bit. That was the one line yeah. where I went, ha. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, other than that, I mean, that's the best moment. <laughs> yeah. right? Well, not really, because Jared Butler is okay. <laughs> well, Jim, uh, uh, Jim Sturgis from this movie once left me a drunken voice oh. message. There you go. Who? Jim Sturgis, the brother in this movie. Oh. How do you know him? Well, he left me a drunken voice message. That's all, I'll, that's all I'll say. And what did he say? Just, in said message. He sang to me. Okay, we're into we're into la la multiverse land here. Right? <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's true. But that is that is uh, for a different for a different time. That's a different uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. So right, yeah. Go give us go on. Give us your official one to ten ranking there of Geostorm. Two or three. So Geostorm wins. <laughs> Yeah, do you start with Yeah, amazingly enough, even though oh it's the worst, my. It's, the wor- it's the worst of the three films. <laughs> Word. But it wins on the and his little face is so happy. I did see this. I did not see that coming. That is the greatest moment of my life so far. Yeah, and it opens up. It opens up the possibility of Geostorm two. No. You know, uh, <laughs> another Geostorm. Yeah, the weathering. The yeah. weathering. The weathering. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The Ron, like it's like a Ron Sea lad. Weathering yeah. heights. <laughs> Right, so what have we learned in our episode so far? Okay, well, so we've learned that we can clone the dinosaurs. Can we not? 
No. He was hoping you'd change your mind there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. From the, oh, get, the last, last, whatever. I suddenly changed mind. No, I think no, no dinosaurs. Uh, no pet dinosaur for you. Time travel, yes. But yes. entropy, no. A time reversing, no. Time travel, yes. And we can one hundred percent. Me and Jared Butler can control <laughs> the weather, which was our winning film. 20 or 30 percent no the time travel part was 10 you forgot about that time travel was 10 but time reversing was one but yeah but you said it wasn't time uh, uh, travel in that film so yeah, technically no, geostorm yeah. is still yeah, yeah. So, and, yeah. <laughs> technically geostorm is still Andy's working on the averages <laughs> yeah yeah like, still, and, uh, Andy's but, looking for the technicalities he's the one who reads all those you know the thing when you sign up for a new software program and he reads the, the agreement <laughs> yeah, yeah the agreement the whole way through I'm gonna find a loophole somewhere in here I'm gonna find it gonna find it yeah that's Andy <laughs> I don't know what to do next step well, sure, Andy, look, you know, you're happy house. Your Geostorm has been ranked above the other two in terms of science. So, I mean, that's probably the main takeaway, isn't it? Yeah. And Shiv can sleep easy because there's not going to be dinosaurs roaming the Earth. Yeah. Except Anytime birds. Anytime soon. They're Except next birds. on my list. Yeah. The most, yeah, the most dangerous dinosaur of them all. Yeah, birds. Yeah. 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 That's why Absolutely. Alec, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, very much for watching it's been fantastic to be a part of uh, Midland Science for Science Week 2021 if you would like to see more of us or hear more of us we do have a podcast called Sound in Space Uh, check it out on any platform where you want where we regularly try to break Barry (laughs) by getting him to admit to science things that uh, he claims can happen but we all secretly know that they can. Yeah, deep down in, in your dreams in the multiverse. <laughs> so it is a... But for now, it is a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me. And remember that science has all the answers.